Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm going to try to keep these segments bite-sized. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to hop on over to our router and we're going to go ahead and uh, get the VLAN set up going. But before we do that, I did have some suggestions in the comments. Someone said add an IoT network, which I agree with, and then a management network. And with a network this small, where we're basically going to have three infrastructure devices. Um, the router by default is going to answer on all layer three interfaces. Yes, we can fix that. But with these three, I, I don't know that maintaining that, that infrastructure network is really advantageous, right? This is a Soho network. Obviously, we're going to block guests from being able to get into... Um, any of the devices, we're going to block IoT from being able to get, in it, get into any of the devices. So let's bring up our spreadsheet real quick. We'll add the IoT network, and then we'll go to work configuring these VLANs on the router. All right, so here is our spreadsheet of magic, and we're going to make IoT 10.11.0.0 with a 255, 255, 255, 255, 128, just because we don't know how many... Um, IOT devices we're going to have and IOT sprawl, I think is a, is a real thing, right? I mean, everything is, is becoming internet connected, refrigerators, toasters, washing machines. You've got all of your smart devices, uh, vacuum cleaners. I mean, you name a device, they want an internet connection. And most of them are what we classify as actual IOT devices where you can't control them locally, but both the app you're using and the device are going out to a central kind of command and control uh, device to be controlled. And um, I'm not a huge fan of those uh, types of devices, but I'm also a realist that they're out there. Uh, if you're using those devices, just know that when that company goes out of business or that server goes down, you can't control the device, right? So I'm a huge fan of manual uh, locks on doors, uh, all, all those good, good kind of things. So just a quick recap, we have our main LAN, which we're going to have to change the IP address on, on the router, so we'll do that. we got our VoIP, our CCTV, our guest, VPN still to be determined, and now we have added our IoT. So we're going to have six networks, uh, which I think is going to work out pretty well. So let's get the router up here. All right, so I'm probably going to have to switch back and forth between that spreadsheet um, quite a bit uh, because it's early in the morning and the coffee hasn't kicked in. So what we're going to do to configure these is we're going to go to network settings, and the first thing I want to do is re review our port config because what's going to happen right now, I have my PC plugged directly into port 6 for the LAN, and so port 654 two and one are all set up as, as LAN. And once we connect this to the switch in two videos from now, uh, we're gonna use one of our SFP ports to do that uplink, which will free up some copper here. We'll also keep copper ports on the switch open for devices. So um, this is a temporary setup, but you also need to understand that when we start configuring the VLANs, that that is that's important. So, all right, our first uh, network, we're going to change the main network to 192.168.10.0 with a uh, .128 subnet mask. So, let's take a look at doing that. So, we're going to edit this. We're going to change this to 10. We're going to change the subnet mask. 128. We still want... Uh, DHCP. So we're going to do 10 dot and we're going to leave some, some IP addresses up front for static addressing for our switch, our access point, our NAS, things like that. Uh, so we're going to go, we're going to start at um, 50 and we are going to end at 100 because I honestly don't believe we're going to have that many devices. And now, our WAN is DHCP, so what's happening with our WAN is that we are, we're handing the router out uh, by default as the DHCP server, and then the router is brokering those DNS connections, which is also how we are then 
able to identify traffic. So I'm going to leave that at default. We're not doing IP version 6 yet. If you're interested in IP version 6, let me know. So now what's going to happen is after I save this, I'm going to lose communication with the router. I'm going to have to rele release and renew my IP, and then we'll have to get back into the router on the new IP. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, release, renew my IP, and I will be right back. All right, you can see that we have uh, obtained a new IP address, 10.81 with 10.1 as the gateway, which is the router. So let's get logged into that, and we'll finish setting up these VLANs. All right, the router is now answering on 10.1, so we're going to go ahead and get logged in here. We're going to go back to our network settings and LAN. And as you can see, right now on all the ports, uh, VLAN 1 is the PVID and it is allowed. And that that is important going forward. Uh, if you don't understand PVID and allowed VLANs and things like that, let me know. I'll do a, a video specific to Grandstream. I do have some other vendor videos. It works the same way with with other vendors. Uh, we're not going to do any static IPs yet. We might do some local DNS records. In fact, we will do some local DNS records when we get our NAS set up. But for now, let's go ahead and add that next VLAN. So I'm just going to highlight this fella here because it's set up. So now we're going to do our VoIP, uh, which is going to be 172.16.1.0 with a 255, 255, 255-248 subnet mask, VLAN 16. So we're going to do 16 here. VoIP. Leave the destination um, uh, as a WAN 1 because we only have one WAN. We're going to do 172.16.1.1, 255, 255, 255, we are going to enable DHCP for 172.16.1.3 through 172.16.1.5. So we'll hand out three addresses. Uh, dot two will be our PBX. When we get there, we're going to leave everything else default for the moment. Now, by default on the Grandstream router, these VLANs are going to have communication between them. So in the next video, we're going to uh, set up our rules for IoT and guests and all that. This video, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we get these VLANs set up. All right, next VLAN is going to be CCTV. So we're going to do the same thing here. So that was two CCTV. 72.16.2.1, 255, 248. Now, also, if we did not turn on VLAN port IP4 address, it would not create these layer 3 interfaces. And so we would essentially just have just a VLAN, and we would need another gateway to do the routing for that. 172.16.2.2 or dot three through 172.16.2.5. Uh, and oh, it won't let me use VLAN two. So we must be using VLAN two. Did I must be using it internally? Because it wants us to use three. So two must be reserved. Uh, maybe for something else. Let's see. Um, I wonder if VLAN 2 is like a auto VoIP or something like that. That's a good question, but it won't let us use that. So we're going to have to change that over to uh, 3 until I figure out why 2. Yeah, range 3 through 4094. So 2 has got to be reserved for something. So we'll have to remember that going forward. 172.16.2.1. I'm going to change that. Uh, 255, 255, 255, 248. That kind of threw me off. 172.16.3.3 through 172.16.3.5. 
We're going to leave everything else the same. We're going to update our spreadsheet of madness here. And that one's done. So now we're going to do our guest. And that's going to be 10. It'll let us do that one. I didn't even notice that. Uh previously so i'll have to look back through the notes see if i can figure out what the the deal is 10.0.0.0.1 is going to be our uh, interface address here with uh, uh, 255 255 255 128 we're going to do 10. 0.0.2 because there's not going to be any infrastructure uh, devices in uh, there's not going to be any infrastructure devices in the guest network now like I said the these are going to have full communication between them by default next video is where we're going to tighten down the router settings VPN we're going to skip for now and 11 is going to be that IOT going to be 10.11.0.1255255255128. Now, I am going to leave a little range in here because maybe you are going to have some things, some servers or whatever that you're going to put uh, static addresses on. So we'll start the DHCP range at... Uh, 50 and we'll run that out to 150 or 127 and I got to make sure that I attend 11 that's good so for now we're going to leave all this the same we're going to go ahead and save that and all of our VLANs are now set up so in the next video we're going to tighten down uh, the firewall rules I'm going to show you how to do that I'm going to uh, show you how to change uh the PVID and the uh, allowed VLANs just in case you need to make that change. But as of right now, this is set up ready for the next step. So make sure you come back for the next video. And if you like this video in this series, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links and a Patreon link. If you'd like to support the channel, if you need IT consulting for best practice, network setup, firewall setup, wireless, wired, uh, security, NAS, VoIP, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.